Hey everyone, in this video I just wanted to quickly go over the apps that I use with my LG SL10 YG soundbar. So initially when you set it up, you have to install the Google Home app. And this is the one where you actually uh, connect the soundbar to the internet with um, and basically do the initial setup. However, once you've got it set up in Google Home, and I believe once you're setting it up, it will actually prompt you to do to do this. Um, there's videos online giving you tu tutorials on how to actually set it up initially. Um, but as I say, once you've got that set up, um, what you want to do is download this app. So the LG Wi-Fi speaker app. And initially when you come into it, you will need to um, add the device. It's fairly straightforward in terms of um, following the instructions in order to add it. Now what this does is obviously it initially gives you on the main screen it gives you a few options so your function is basically switching between the diff various modes so um, HMI1, HMI2 and then you've also got obviously the Bluetooth and ARC and everything like that um, all of that stuff on mine in particular because of the way I've got it set up I don't need to make any adjustments to this um, I just leave that to to do its own thing below that obviously you've got the volume indicator you can use this as a slider and just below that is telling you which input it's actually using at the moment now if you hit the gear icon and you go into the settings this is the part that is most important a lot of this stuff you can actually do with the remote um, the physical remote but there's one setting in particular for the down that um, you do need to do via the app so coming from the top down so sound effect um, originally I believe it comes on standard and then obviously you have these other modes when I've received mine and done a bit, little bit of testing I personally found that the movie mode was the best one uh, that's the one that I preferred the most for the general uh, viewing that I, I use it for so mainly movies TV shows um, gaming same thing again it has a very good effect on that um, you do have these uh, I'm just so in the top right where the little icon is if you tap that um, you do have this option where you can make adjustments personally I prefer to leave this as whatever the source material is doing so I don't really make any adjustments on this now if you come back obviously there's a few more options so nighttime this is if you do want to reduce the base and everything um, I don't really use this option um, DRC similar thing so it's basically um, equalizing all the sound for you so obviously whatever volume level you've got it set to it'll kind of equalize the sound at that point so you basically it'll dim everything else in the scenes when there's big explosions or anything so next one down neural X um, this one I've, I've leave on just because if it does ever come to any DTS content obviously this is almost doing a similar thing to what Dolby Atmos uh, would do where, whereby it will basically channel everything through the correct speakers, the correct channels um, to make sure you're getting the, the, the right sound outputs. Now just coming back a bit to the sound effects. Now the one thing that you'll notice obviously on here you've got five listings. What actually happens is whenever you play anything that is uh, that the soundbar recognizes as Dolby Atmos content, another option appears here. Um, it, well it doesn't appear here but it appears at the top and it'll, it'll lock it into Dolby Atmos mode. Um, whilst that's enabled is the only time you're actually getting true Dolby Atmos. Um, I obviously have the Apple TV set up with my TV and I have tested Dolby Atmos um, content that I know is Dolby Atmos um, format but just because of the application so on the Apple TV I, ha I use an app called Infuse um, that will play back everything um, every format that is out there and it will play back true HD 7.1 but it w won't actually say Dolby Atmos on the soundbar itself um, I have not really had a direct answer as to whether that is then playing back um, all of your height channels and everything like that correctly uh, whether the separation is as good as it can be because the soundbar technically isn't seeing that as um, Dolby Amos content it might only be seeing it as 5.1 or 7.1 7 um, it's not recognizing the dot 2 um, in my case and obviously dot 4 in if, if you've got additional rear uh, Atmos speakers so that's obviously an option what I'll do is I'll try and 
Um, my son's actually using the, the TV at the moment, he's, he's gaming on there, so I can't actually switch it to anything, but um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll insert an extra clip that shows once the Dolby Atmos um, content is enabled, how this will automatically switch to Dolby Atmos mode. Uh, below that, so it's got the, the grayed out one, so it works with DTS, enable content for clear voice and less background noise. Um, that once again is similar to the Dolby Atmos thing, so it'll only actually enable when it detects the, the correct source. Um, this isn't something that um, I've ever really adjusted. Auto volume, similarly, I don't really make any adjustments to this. I don't, I don't prefer having that enabled. Um, if we're watching movies and stuff, we'll try and watch it at a reasonable time so we're not disturbing neighbors and everything like that. Um, AV sync, now one of the issues with the soundbar um, that people have mentioned online, um, which is the lip sync issue. Um, with the C9, because of the way I've got it set up, I don't really experience this, this problem because everything's going through my soundbar initially. However, if say for example, if I was to use the YouTube app on the C9 uh, OLED, um, and then that's uh, using the ARC port to pass sound back down to the uh, soundbar. Occasionally you will notice that there is a slight lip sync issue. Obviously this is intended to actually try and rectify that and the TV also has uh, a built-in mode where you can actually make quite a few different adjustments. I had a little play about with it but I couldn't actually find anything where I was actually happy to the point where it looks bang on so generally if I'm using certain apps um, the only thing I'm really re using through di directly through the TV anyway is YouTube just to get the 4k pass through because Apple TV doesn't uh, support 4k on YouTube but everything else movies everything else TV shows gaming everything is going through the soundbar first so I'm not getting any uh, lip sync issues uh, via that um, coming down a bit further so this these are the main ones that i've actually kind of uh settled on in terms of the settings uh with regards to sound levels so woofer level generally i'll leave it on three it's only in certain movies where i might crank this up a little possibly up to five when i first got it obviously as with everybody um, you crank it all the way up just to see what it can do um, and it was a bit too booming and obviously with the center channel adjustment same thing again I've only got that on five I've not put that all the way up if you put it all the way up I personally find that's it's too centrally focused and it kind of uh, cuts out um, the audio from your left and your rights as well as your, your sides um, so basically these are the settings so I go with woofer level three center speaker five decibels and obviously if you click on these you can make all your adjustments you can go a lot further down if you wanted to and obviously come come back up um, overhead speakers so this 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 is your front Dolby Atmos speakers um, I've cranked that all the way up just because of the layout of my room and also because of the surface on on the ceiling in, in the room that I've actually got this in it's got the old kind of um, I'm not sure what you call it the uh, the, the little dimples that they put into the plaster is it's really old-fashioned kind of uh, ceiling that I've got in there and because of that the the sound will obviously not rebound the same as it would if it was just a smooth plastered roof uh, or ceiling sorry um, I was hoping to try and get that done before I actually got all my media s stuff set up um, but basically when we move back into this house I'd uh, basically I just didn't have the time so because of that obviously I've got the overhead speakers cranked right up to six um, the overhead effect does work quite well um, I've seen a lot of reviews where they say that they don't really get it and um, they're not really hearing the the overhead effects all your high channels um, but personally whenever we we're watching movies and we, we come across any any rainfall scenes any um, helicopter scenes you, you're definitely getting a lot of separation between everything else and the height one of the reasons for this might be because I've actually got my uh, separate rear kit which is the LG SPK 8S I've got that at ear level um, behind me a lot of people when they mount this because their rears and surrounds um, they'll mount them 
higher up and what that'll do is it'll actually muddle the sound slightly so your Atmos is trying to send only your height so anything that is meant to be above you sending that back down to you whereas if you mount your rear speakers higher up what you're going to end up with is sounds that are meant to be in and around you but just behind you um, they're going to sound like they're coming from on top of you as well so that will actually kind of muddle the sound slightly so because of that i think my setup is actually helping um, how um, how how much height uh, differentiation I'm actually getting uh, when it comes to the Atmos side of things. Um, right, so continuing on, so side speakers, I've got this cranked all the way up, similarly again, just because of the layout of my room. Um, you've probably seen in some of the videos where I've got my TV against a flat wall, um, it then comes out on both sides, however, I've just on the right hand side, just maybe about a meter and a half in, um, I've actually got a bay window and because of that on one side you're not going to get the same uh, reflection as you will on the other so because of that I've just got it kind of cranked up as much as uh, possible your si side speakers um, generally most stuff doesn't actually t uh, make very good use of this similarly with your, your rear speakers as well however I've ha I have watched some content on uh, Amazon Prime as well as Netflix that you definitely get a lot of um, separation and there's scenes where it's all quiet and then you might hear a, a car door or something and it'll sound exactly like it's coming from behind you and as the camera pans around that's exactly where the car would have been it would have been behind you to the right or behind you to the left you hear doors closing and as the camera pans around you, it comes around to the left and that's where the sound w was coming from so definitely the, the separation and everything from the soundbar is very good um, just coming back to the center speaker obviously I, ha I had a comment uh, from one of the subscribers earlier this week um, asking me about the SL10 um, they actually had the SL9 YG and basically they were comparing it and um, he, he basically he just wasn't very happy with his center channel um, and also the subwoofer. Now me personally obviously that that was one of the reasons I went for the 10 as opposed to the 9 because of the the dedicated center channel and as you can see from my settings I don't even need to put my center channel all the way up um, in order to get very very good vocals. Um, I've never got any issues with the vocals uh, coming off the, the soundbar. Um, the woofer level, the only time, as I mentioned in the, in the reply to that comment, um, the only real issue I've, I've found with um, the subwoofer was initially when I set it up I had the subwoofer on the right hand side of my room um, and it was just facing my back wall. Um, since then, whenever we're watching a movie, I will turn it and angle it into the center of the room just to reduce some of the, the, the boom reflex that you get off the corners of the rooms. And also what I've done is obviously um, w when we're watching movies, I'll basically move the, the back sofa forwards um, and because you're, you're slightly separated from the wall, um, it'll kind of help to reduce that effect of all the, all the low frequencies just bouncing around the room basically. Um, you can assist this by obviously adding um, it, uh, sound insulation, uh, sound dampening panels to the room and stuff like that. Personally it's not something, I mean it's not a proper home cinema or anything, it's just a home theatre set up so that's not something that I'm really going to do because of the look of the room and everything. Uh, that particular room is mainly all mine but obviously my wife is still um, helped in terms of the decorating and everything so um, sticking panels all over the walls isn't something that um, I'm really looking to do. Anyway com continuing on so your side speaker levels as I said I've got that cranked all the way up. Your rear speaker level um, this is both from the soundbar as well as your, your rear kit. Now the one just below that your rear speaker output this is the setting where originally I believe it's on this so when you first set up your um, rear speaker kit if, if you if you opt for the additional um, rear speaker kit the SPK 8S originally I believe it'll be on this and what I found was switching this um, generally tends to have a better effect in terms of making sure um, you're getting the right content now from the description it almost sounds like it's the opposite so the original sound says listen to the sound from the original source channel so that would kind of tell you that yeah you're only getting the rear sound however 
the one above it is surround, you can always listen to the sound from the rear speaker. It's, the description is almost backwards in terms of how it actually relates to when you're using it. Me personally, what I found was if I've got it switched the other way, mainly it could possibly be because this, the sound is actually being channeled from the, the soundbar, it's still thinking of the soundbar and thinking that is what's projecting your rear surround. But I find original sound to be um, almost like you're getting everything there is no separation and i find when you have it on surround option that's when you're getting this the separation you're only getting the sound from the rear now it could just be a bug with this particular app it could be an issue with the way that the um the wireless uh receiver for the the rear speakers is is getting its signal but personally that's what i've had to do to, in order to get it to actually sound right that's a uh, a setting that a lot of people tend to forget about or just don't know about because they've not downloaded the app. The soundbar comes with a remote. Uh, the remote is quite good and you can literally do almost everything from it. This particular option, I believe there is a way that you can even get to this option on the remote as well. Um, but it's not something that you would probably come across very easily. Whereas in the app, it's obviously very, very simple and very obvious in terms of how you switch it. So continue on using the TV, yes, so obviously uh, you don't want to have to use loads of different remotes, so keep that enabled and auto power on and off. Sleep time I never really use because whenever it's connected to anything, um, it's gonna basically turn on and off with that anyway. Um, smart diagnosis, and this is a test that you can actually run um, when you actually sat in the room and I believe it actually similarly to like some of the the newer systems it'll actually use your phone's microphones to run the test it'll play sounds and bounce them off the walls just to try and get an idea of what the best setup for your for your particular room is I think I actually ran this once when I first got it but I didn't really notice any difference um, in the sound or anything like that so um, this isn't something that I've really needed to mess about with um, anyway so that that's the the main app now alongside that obviously if you do use the google assistant you will need to download the google assistant app as well and Hi, just set that Mohammed. up personally i don't use it i i use siri at home or just use my phone so um that's not really any use to me but i, I did download it and just set it up initially so anyway that's that's a quick look at um the apps i did want to make this video because a lot of people don't actually dive into it and um basically going through your settings, um, making changes, making tweaks, or just setting up uh, a default for yourself. A lot of people won't have done it, and in particular with the, the rear speaker switch, um, switching it from surround to, uh, or original sound to surround. That's something that a lot of people probably won't have even done. So I thought it might be helpful to somebody out there um, if they come across this video. Anyway, that's that's all for today. Um, I've got a lot more videos planned, so please subscribe, hit the bell icon and share as well. Thank you for watching.